Hi and welcome to my channel. For this video I got 5 broken Sony M607V microcassette recorders for just $25 delivered on eBay. They came from Lithuania and they used to belong to the Lithuanian police, as seller told me. Not sure how I got them, but that makes it more interesting, I would say. So, let me show you what I did. First of all, I test them out. The device number one looked in really good shape, that's why I put it at the first place. It seems that rewind, fast forward, play and even the counter were working and spinning properly. However, at the moment of performing the test with the tape on, I realized that the tape was stuck and not playing at all, even though rewind and fast forward were working fine. That's a clear sign that a new belt is required, as well as it will be certainly required for the other four devices. Regarding the device number two, the working conditions of this one were a little bit worse than the first one, as the play and rewind buttons didn't work at all. However, the counter was working also here, so the only belt to replace was just the main one. Now let's move to the third one. As you can see, each of the devices had something written on the back, which was covered. Most probably, was a kind of police identification number, or something like that, who knows. Also here, the working conditions were not that bad, as the motor inside was spinning, also the counter works fine, but a new belt was definitely needed. And here is the number 4, which looked the most problematic one, as the play button didn't remain pressed, and there was no sign of activity, so it was not just a matter of replacing the belt here. And now the last one, which aesthetically looked really bad, and removing these stickers on the back was not that easy. This one, as well as the number 4, didn't show any sign of life at all. So, the repair challenge began of course with the device number one, which, as mentioned before, seemed to be in very good shape and easy to fix. I had to be careful, as I didn't know at all this model so I had no idea how it looked inside and how to open it up without damages. Eventually wasn't that difficult to open, and after a first check I was able to flip over the circuit board and get access to the mechanism and the belt without problems. I didn't have to desolder any cable for that so that made things really easy and quick. In the first moment, the belt looked in really good conditions, but once I start moving the capstan, I noticed how sticked it was. Basically, the main reason why the play was not working. Before replacing the belt, I had to quickly clean up the area with some compressed air to remove any traces of dirt and dust, and then, with some isopropyl alcohol, for a deeper cleaning of the circuit board and the mechanism. I ordered a bunch of new belts from DECTEC directly on eBay, exactly for this model, and they quickly arrived from UK. The kit contained both main and counter belts.
After installing the main belt, I carefully close it back, paying attention to not tear these tiny cables apart. The counter was working fine, so there was no need to replace the belt also there. At the first test, all seemed to be working and spinning properly, but to check the actual final results, I of course performed a test with the tape on. One, two, three, check. Three, two, one, sound check, device number one, Sony. 3, 2, 1, check, test. Nice, as you can see the repair of the first one was really successful and I didn't face any particular issues. I just forgot to show how I cleaned up the case, but you will see that in the next chapters. The device number 2 was eventually the most problematic one and you will see later what was wrong with it. Since I knew a little bit more the device after working on the first one I just repaired, this opening was faster and easier. In this case the belt was exactly as it was supposed to be, pretty loosened, but at least was not sticked onto the capstan and I was able to remove it really easily. Also here, before installing the new belt, I just repeated the same cleaning operations with air duster. This time I wanted to focus a little bit more on the internal switches using a dedicated spray for contacts. After that, I cleaned up everything with IPA alcohol to remove any trace of the oily spray over the circuit board and the mechanism. And I easily installed a fresh new belt still from DECTEC. You will find these belts on eBay from the seller called Mana3. They have several belts for the exact model of the device you need. After closing it, I wanted to clean the back from the ink used to cover that sort of identification number. For doing so, I used again the IPA alcohol. It took me a while, but eventually I was able to remove both ink and numbers. To complete the cleaning, I used a normal glass cleaner together with a medium tooth brusher to eliminate any hidden trace of dust.
after the cleaning, the moment of the truth. I test the device with a tape on and I surprisingly noticed that it was totally dead. I thought it was just a matter of new belt, but most probably something happened when closing it back. So I decided to open it up again, to check what's wrong. I thought it could have been a power problem, but when I checked the mechanism, I noticed what was not allowing the device to power on. That little piece of mechanism fell apart. It didn't seem unscrewed, but literally broken and out of place. This little guy is the one which is pushing the internal switch when I press the play button and is telling the system to turn on. The only way to put this little piece back is to glue it. So for now I decided to put this device aside and if I won't be able to repair it, I will at least use it as a replacement unit. With the third device, everything went smoothly and without issues. The belt was exactly in the same conditions as in the previous device, loosened but not sticked at all and easy to remove. I repeated the same cleaning operations with toothbrush first and air duster. This time I wanted to take a look at the other side of the mechanism, just to check how it looks like and maybe have the counter belt replaced, since are included in the belts kit I purchased, so why don't use them? I removed the counter belt and actually it doesn't look in perfect shape. But however, the counter is perfectly working also here, so I decided not to change the belt and leave the new one for future needs. After carefully cleaning the area with IPA alcohol, I put back the counter belt, but was not that easy as with the normal main belt, as you can see. At this point, I checked that everything was fine and in its own place, so I closed back this area with his own cover. I moved to the other side and I installed the main belt, put few drops of oil onto the gears and screwed back the circuit board. And also with this device I spent a lot of time removing the ink and numbers from the back, but obviously I couldn't leave it in that conditions. For the external cleaning I tried to use this time a spray for screens and it fantastically worked. And here is the final test. One, two, three, check. Three, two, one, check. Device number three, Sony M607V. One, two, three, check. 3, 2, 1, check, test.
three, two, one, check, test. Sound seemed really clear and recording was done without problems. This is the second successful repair out of five, but there are still two more left. The device number four was the one with the problematic play button which didn't want to stay down. I was really afraid there was nothing I could do with that, but eventually I managed and I will show you how. So after the opening, same identic process as usual, for the fourth time, and that means removing the old belt, cleaning with toothbrush, and once again, air duster. After the first cleaning, I immediately went to check what was wrong with the play button and after a while I noticed that something was out of place and the mechanism wasn't working as it should. Before understanding better the issue, I wanted to have a deeper cleaning inside with IPA alcohol and have the counter belt replaced, as this time was in really terrible shape and ovalized. After closing the mechanism section with its own cover, I went back to the play button issue and I realized that a spring on the other side was out of place and somehow not allowing the button to remain pressed. I managed to fix it up so the play button became functional again. I installed a fresh new belt, but during the operations I accidentally broke a microphone cable, so I had to solder it back. The last step before a final test was to close it back, and once again I had to clean up the backside from that annoying ink and numbers. One, two, three, test, device number four, Sony M607V, one, two, three, test, sound check, device number four, test, 
one, two, one, two, test. After performing the final test, I realized that something was wrong when listening to what I've tried to record. I could not hear almost any sound, or the volume of the recorded voice was extremely low. So at this point I thought it could be an issue with a built-in microphone. To confirm my suppositions I used my Zoom H1 digital microphone connected via the line-in jack. 1, 2, 3, sound check. External microphone, Zoom H1 on Sony M607V, device number 4. After recording my voice in this way, I could confirm that the device was able to record and that the problem was definitely with a built-in microphone. As well as the second device, I had to put also this one aside, waiting for a replacement or an idea how to fix it. And finally, here is the device number 5, which I put at the last place since it didn't want to power on, if you remember that from the first testing intro. For this device, the restoring process was the same as usual. Apart from a strong red paint all over the case, which didn't go away, and a really twisted belt, eventually I didn't face any issue with it. Therefore, I won't bother you with any of my comments this time, and I will let you enjoy this last chapter of the repair challenge with the background of my ambient music.
3, 2, 1, check, device number 5, Sony M607V. So, if you are still watching, I'm sure you would like to know what about the devices number 2 and 4, which I put aside. Well, here is what I did. So here are the number 2 and 4. What I did was simply to desolder the microphone and the speaker from the number 2 and install them into the number 4. I was not totally sure if the speaker of the number 2 was fully working as the device eventually didn't turn on, but I just wanted to try if it was better than the speaker of the fourth device. After that I moved to the device number 4 and start the replacement operation. After checking if all the cables were in place, I closed it up and I prepared it for the final test. And here we are, the moment of the truth, the final test of this merging. 1, 2, 3, check, device number 4, with microphone replaced, 1, 2, 1, 2, sound check, 1, 2, 1, 2, sound check. Eventually it worked very well, even though I had no chance to know if the microphone from the device number 2 was functional or not. This was an unexpected successful repair and I'm glad I managed. We are at the end of our journey. This challenge was a bit hard but convenient as I could now resell these devices for around 40 or 50 dollars each unless I will decide to keep them all for myself and for my music project. The total I spent for this repair adventure was just $25 for the 5 devices, but around $50 for all the belts, which were quite expensive. Excluding 1 out of 5 which I put aside for parts only, I might earn around $100 if I would sell just the four pieces I fixed. However, never mind the money. I really enjoyed the process, bringing back to life these nice recorders and share my knowledge and experience with the viewers. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you enjoyed my background music, check out my Bandcamp page and get it for free, or you could also make your offer if you would like to support me. Find the link in the description below. 
The track I included in this video was called The Peaceful Walk from my second album Discovery. If you like ambient music, stay tuned as I'm gonna release soon some new material. Subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.